Hey everyone, that's Alan over at Cowboys Plus, and yes, I'm wearing a cowboy hat today. Today's video, come check out in our daily post. We're gonna be talking about desalting, what it is, and what you need to do to make sure you have your footwear last as long as possible. So thank you for joining us today on our daily video. In today's video, like I mentioned, we're gonna be talking about salt. Salt on your footwear. It's a big, big problem that a lot of people tend to ignore and tend to neglect a lot of times. A lot of people are a little bit more concerned about the appearance of it, but don't really understand the fact that it's actually extremely damaging for your footwear. Whether it's man-made leather or real leather, doesn't matter what type it is, it's extremely damaging all across the board. Now, what is salt? Salt, it's, it's basically really the, just short term, basically for a mineral that is put out on the streets. Here in Colorado, we get a lot of snowstorms and everything. So the city, the state, the county, they always put out a salt mineral out onto the pavements to basically melt the snow and ice so that it's safe to drive on and safe to even walk on. Now, it's great stuff for that, but what happens when it gets into your shoes? You might not be wearing those shoes also during winter time, but you can still get those minerals absorbed into even your sandals as well. And when that happens, it's frustrating, not only appearance-wise, but also for the leather itself. Now, that mineral can basically be absorbed into your shoes, one, either if you're wearing them during a snowy day or right after it snowed. It could also be worn during the summer if it rains, like today, it's actually it rained earlier today. That small puddle that you step in it has a lot of those salts and minerals in it already because what do they do they don't actually clean up those minerals off the ground afterwards they might go through with the sweet sweep uh, street sweeper but that's about it um but as far as actually removing that chemical and all those minerals it doesn't do much it stays on that pavement and of course, obviously your shoes end up picking it up. Now in today's video, we're featuring a pair of two boot New Yorks, which are a great shoe, but uh, these are really beaten up. I actually got these as a thrift store find that I've been wanting to experiment with over and over and can't get around to it. But I think I should finally start at least uh, with our daily videos and work on these little by little, showing you what we're gonna be doing. Now these two boot New Yorks, they were kind of uh, just to see how it looks like and everything after we just do a basic polish or touch up over top of it. Um, salt, obviously you'll have white staining, like you can see here on the bottom of the sole. A lot of times it'll happen in like weird streaks here all over the sides. But if you take your shoes to somebody who's not experienced or if you are doing it yourself and you do not pre-treat the shoe beforehand, you might not be able to see it, but you can definitely feel like this odd bumpy area here almost like some kind of deformation in the leather itself and that's what the salt will do those minerals they start to make it kind of pucker up that leather will start to pucker and it's it's a bad sign basically and a lot of times you actually cannot remove that whatsoever you could try to cover it up you could try to scrub it but it gets to a certain point if you don't treat it beforehand it's gonna stay permanent that way and your beautiful shoes can end up destroyed in other words um, let alone what it does on a molecular level basically because it does have a reaction with that leather and starts degrading it significantly so if you're wanting your shoes to hold up for a long period of time take care of that salt obviously waterproofers beforehand or some form of waxes will help prevent the absorption of those salts and minerals into your footwear but if you see it let your shoes dry thoroughly, do not wear them, let them dry thoroughly, and then go through and uh, do what we're about to tell you. Now, desalters in general, there are a number of them out there. They're all almost the same. They all have a base of white vinegar in it. I've got some uh, white vinegar right here. This is a cleaning one, not, a, not one for food in particular. You could use this if you have nothing around uh, you know, to be able to do that, you don't have a desalter like from Angelus, from Feebings, from Saphir. At the very least, if you use a white vinegar, it doesn't have to be a cleaning one. Just make sure it's the white vinegar, not the yellow or brown one. Um, apparently there are those. I'm not much of knowing about the cooking side of things when it comes to different vinegars, but I know that there's a white vinegar. You could either use that one or a cleaning vinegar like this one here. 
Obviously, it's not going to be the ideal thing just because it's not quite as potent. If you need to take it up a step, you could always go for something like Angelus's desalter. It's clear like that. Saphir's got their desalter. It's a uh, high for winter. Basically, they uh, pr advertise it as an agent for w w after winterized footwear or after winter damage type of thing. Um, there are ones from like Money's Worth Best. I'm a little skeptical about this one because it's an aerosol version. I don't like using too much aerosol stuff because they have to add specific chemicals to make it an aerosol and that could be kind of damaging to the leather in general. Now uh, there are other ones too. Phoebe's makes a great one that's blue so don't freak out if it's blue. That's actually just food coloring that they throw in there. So even if you get like three different bottles of Angelus or four, they, they're even a little bit off in shade too. Doesn't mean one is better than the other or one is more potent. It's just food coloring in there. That's all it is. So if you do come across a desalter that comes in a bottle and it's blue, that's just an indication basically from the company so that they can identify it when it's being produced. So don't freak out, clear or blue, it's not gonna change the color of your shoes. I do try to avoid if you have a white suede or a white nubuck leather using the blue ones personally. I, I haven't had any issues, I haven't come across anyone having issues with it, but I still, I'm still a little cautious about that. Now, using a desalter is definitely, oops, definitely going to be a lot more potent than just using the white vinegar or cleaning vinegar because it's a little bit more concentrated. So if you're going to be doing a spot treating, definitely go this route. Um, again, I'm a little skeptical always on any form of aerosol, so we're going to get rid of that one. I had that as a sample piece somebody just gave to me, one of our vendors, but I don't even want to test it out basically. just. Aerosol is not great, unfortunately, uh, not for a cleaning agent, in other words. But anyways, if you're going to be just doing a spot treating, do this. Now, if, you, uh, if you're trying to do it on a pair of shoes that are a finished leather like this, something that's smoother, box leather, calf leather, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you have any waxes removed. I know some of you out there who love to shine your own shoes. Some of you take them to professional shoe shiners and cobblers. So you, you want to make sure you remove the waxes, otherwise you're kind of not really doing much, in other words. So you definitely want to take out your Reno mat or your acetone or rubbing alcohol to remove just the waxes. Um, that way this can penetrate directly into the leather. Uh, obviously, if you're going to be cleaning them beforehand, you're going to notice that the white staining and the minerals look like they're gone. They're not really gone. Alcohol and uh, turpentine and all those other cleaning agents and solutions, they don't remove the salt minerals. They don't deactivate them. They'll just, the appearance wise will look better, but if you're expecting long-term results, you, you can't rely on that. You definitely have to go with a desalter or at least white vinegar. So. After you've got all your waxes and everything removed, which I should probably do on these ones here real quick, so give me just a quick sec. Sorry, had to clean these up real quick beforehand, at least the left foot. Um, right foot I'm going to leave alone for a minute. But uh, again, sometimes it will remove that uh, white appearance basically, and then it can reappear very quickly and very easily after a little bit of wearing basically. So. Don't rely on that strictly. You're gonna have to take it up to the desalters. Now on this pair, it's definitely had some puckering occur on it right over here. I don't know if the camera can catch it, but there's a faint little line where there's no white marking, but it, there's almost like this weird bubble looking texture finish on it. And that's that salt causing damage to the leather itself. Now I'm gonna be using the Saphir Hiver Winter, I guess it's called. I, Hope I'm pronouncing that right uh, and just treating it in other words so you're gonna put it on a rag if you have a smooth leather and just apply a generous coat and just kind of scrub it back and forth and this again is if you're just treating a spot now if you have significant damage all over or if you want to do a full treatment um, you can pour this one's a little bit of a thicker agent here from Saphir, but if you get the desalter from Angelus or the Phoebings one, um, or even the Lincoln one I believe they have as well, and pour it into a cup, you could actually take one of these nylon brushes, there's this one from Angelus, it's one of my favorite because it's a little bit of a softer bristle brush, um, and then there's also this one from Four Seasons, it's kind of a generic one, so you'll be able to find them maybe in other brands too. Just dip it into the bowl and just scrub over the entire shoe and uh, that will definitely help significantly get a larger surface area and it really 
gets in there deep because you're you're doing a scrubbing motion now using a desalter or a white vinegar or a combination of them or anything it's not a strong enough solution or mixture of solutions that will start to strip and remove the original dye pigment so you're not going to cause any kind of issues now if you start getting to the suede's new books or oil treated leathers you're going to want to take the route of using the brush regardless on all of those because with suede and new buck when you get a shoe wet you kind of want to get the whole shoe wet on those otherwise you will have water marking left over it's not going to be damaging to the leather it's just not going to appear very nice it looks kind of like it was stained um, but there's a next stage for that too where you can start introducing the lincoln easy cleaner and we'll talk about suede a little bit later on in the future because that's a whole different ball game basically altogether. we're mostly talking about salt on finished smooth leathers, um, even exotics too, you could do the same thing on it as well, but not all, just a handful of exotics. Something something that's a little bit more on the smooth side, like alligator, caiman, uh, snake skin, you can do it as well because you don't want to use an nylon brush too much on snake skin anyways because of the scales. Just, just envision it this way. What's going to happen to those uh, exotic skins if you're going to take a nylon brush to it on its own? might cause some damage it might not just kind of envision it and think about that otherwise you can always uh send me a message and ask about that or you can always ask your local cobbler or shoe shiner professional as well so anyways uh now at this point we've treated it just give it a little bit of time to dry obviously this one is puckered up so much that it's not going to end up getting too much better in other words so there's very little that we can do about that because the salt has just settled in there fairly permanently but the key thing that we did at least do is deactivate the salt minerals in here so that we can move on and continue with our next steps of what we want to do with these shoes whether it's you know continue cleaning it um, conditioning and polishing it and so on but this is just to pre-treat the shoe now obviously what we did right now is just strictly a spot treating in other words it's just one little area and you could always bump that up to doing a larger surface area you could use strictly this if you would like to again this one's great but it is a little bit seems like it has a little bit of a, like a gelatin type added to it so it's a little thicker strictly a little more along the lines of treating spots in other words um, I highly recommend though if you do this method you make sure you go through the entire shoe afterwards obviously if you go be go through with it beforehand with the reno mat or alcohol or anything like that to move, remove the waxes give these a little bit of time to dry maybe about five to ten minutes and go through again and clean it with either the reno mat the rubbing alcohol whatever cleaning agent you're using um, you know saddle soap as well just to kind of help remove the vinegar smell obviously vinegar has a smell to it so you're going to want to try to kind of remove it it'll dissipate after a little while obviously but why not take an extra step and just kind of do it the proper way and just remove it i mean there's no harm if you leave it on there um it has to be done sometimes on suede and new bucks anyways because there's not a safe way of full-on cleaning it sometimes but you know that's suede and new buck for you but if you're needing to do a larger surface area or you have a number of shoes here at our shop, obviously, especially in Colorado, we can sometimes get a dozen pairs in from just one person and they all have salt damage. So we need to do a lot of them. And what we typically do, we mix up a large batch in either a bucket or we take a spray bottle like this one. Some of you may have seen it in my recraft videos and stuff. And we'll mix into it um, a solution mixture, in other words. And we do white vinegar. Uh, we'll do a little bit of water to kind of help with the evaporation because we're pretty much soaking the shoe. So water is very good to add in, to dilute it to a certain point where it's going to help everything evaporate nicely and evenly. Um, we'll definitely add an entire bottle of this. And sometimes we'll throw this in if we're doing a suede as well. So typically the way I like to do it, for any of you that are wondering, and I know a few cobblers are going to hate me for this. I'm sorry, cobblers, but th this is just one of those that it might actually help you too. And it's still th not guaranteed to help either. I usually like to use a half gallon of white vinegar, one full gallon of water, full eight ounce bottle of Lincoln Easy Cleaner or Angelus Easy Cleaner for suede and new bucks, and then a full four ounce bottle of desalter, whether it's the Phoebings one that's blue or this Angelus one right here. 
and mix it all together and spray it, put it in the spray bottle or leave it in the bucket and we do Swedish washes with that typically. There are additional things that you can always add into it, but I'm not gonna give out those unfortunately. Um, it's kind of one of those that me explaining this right now to you all is already gonna make quite a few people angry unfortunately. But I wanted to just give that to you so that in case you wanna do it yourself, but it also helps you understand the fact that there's a reason why it can cost an extra bit to do a spot treat or a salt treatment basically on a pair of shoes because there are a number of things that have to go into it not only ingredients and products but also a lot of elbow grease as well now the same method can basically be done towards suede's and new books as well but that again you have to do the whole entire boot or shoe that's why also again through a cobbler shop we got to charge a little more for suede and new book when we're doing cleanings on them as well as shoe shiner guys because suede and new book has a number of additional steps as well not just the desalting side it involves additional cleaning but for your smooth leathers i highly recommend if you're doing it yourself just go for one of these desalting products you're probably not going to be willing to do it yourself because sometimes you can go th you can go through it maybe three four times before you actually really do a good job of removing and deactivating those salts that unfortunately is not something i could really teach you as far as being able to identify if it's as thoroughly deactivating deactivated minerals as possible it's it's one of those it's almost like a sixth sense us cobblers we tend to have a sixth sense built up towards a number of things and there's sixth seventh eighth twentieth senses that we kind of get a feel for i'm second generation so i got a feel for certain things and i can identify it as well as a lot of shoe shiners out there and a number of other cobblers they do a great job but we can't unfortunately really teach you that especially not through a video so if you're wanting to do it yourself or if you want to do at least some light maintenance between having to take it to a professional these are definitely great to have you know whether it's the saphir one which is a little harder to find whether it's the angelus one or the Feebings, which is actually one of the easier ones to find. Get some form of desalting agent because, again, if you plan to just put those shoes on a shelf and let them sit there and say, oh, I'll take them to a cobbler or a shoe shiner who's a prof any other professional, basically, and have them take care of it, you might forget about it, and they might be sitting there for a month, two months, three months, and that salt is causing damage. It's just causing damage after damage after damage, and it's just degrading that leather. So have some of this around if you don't plan to do a full treatment to yourself where you have to strip off the waxes and everything at least put a little bit of this on the rag and scrub up those spots that are visible now salt you may not be able to see the within the first 24 to even 48 hours sometimes but if you do notice it if you know that you went outside in bad weather of any kind whether it's snow or rain there's a chance that there may be some minerals absorbed into your leather footwear so definitely keep an eye on it within the next 48 hours if nothing appears you're fine, you should be okay, but if, uh, if you want to take some precautionary measures, again, waterproofers, waxes for smooth leathers to help prevent that, and also if you get back inside the house, grab a rag, wipe off the shoe to make sure that you get off whatever is on the surface. You can't do much about any, anything that's already been absorbed into the leather until about a 24 to 48 hour period once it's all dry, and then you can identify what the problem may be, and from then you can take the proper steps and precautions that you may need to. Anyways, before I continue on, I hope you enjoyed this video. Questions or comments, leave them down below, or you can always stop by our shop or find all, all of our contact information on our website, cobblersplus.com. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and uh, like the video if you definitely have been enjoying watching it. Obviously, this pair is going to need a lot more lovings. It's got scuffs on the toe, so stay tuned as we're going to work on it. This one's got salt damage even on the bottom of the sole here, so I'm probably going to go back there and give it a full-on Swedish wash and just submerge them and get them drenched so it's going to take a little while on these here as well Swedish wash for any of you that are wondering typically that means literally submerging it into a different mixture of solution and we have multiple different mixtures usually in the back and each cobbler has its, his own secret version as well so stay tuned for later videos where we're going to be filling in the scuffs here on the toes as well and just kind of giving these some love and attention and don't forget to hit that notification bell icon to be notified when we're going to be continuing on with working with these and to see additional videos and information about the cobbler industry and other information about footwear as well thank you for watching and we'll see you next time